Else. Please give a huge, warm Kentucky welcome to the wonderful Matt Kimmy. <laughs> doing? Give it up for Kathy. Two days before I was born, a faceless, gray-suited bureaucrat typing away in the bowels of the FBI wrote a memo. It was August 29th. 1963. He said, Martin Luther King should be marked, if we haven't done so previously, as the most dangerous Negro in America. This gray-suited bureaucrat, nobody knew his name, nobody knew how much power he had, but the FBI and the IRS and a number of other alphabet government agencies started to target MLK. They went after his nonprofit. They went after his donors. The IRS started auditing people. All because he had the audacity to organize a march on Washington and talk about equal treatment under the law. Does this sound even slightly familiar? Yes. Do you guys recognize the model here? Should we ever, ever, ever give so much discretionary authority to government bureaucrats? Does it ever make sense to just hope that the people we give so much power will do the right thing with it? Isn't that the difference between them and us? Progressives today keep wanting to find the right bureaucrats. They want to find the right politicians. They want to give so much of our power and money to this huge class of privileged citizens we call the federal government. That's where we are today. They hope, they hope, that these people are better than us and smarter than us and that they won't abuse that power. Well, we know that's not how it works, right? George Washington said it perfectly. Government is a fearful master. He knew that too much power put in the hands of anybody would lead to abuse. We've got to fight this. It is us versus them, isn't it? If you think about it today, we're at this tipping point. All of these alphabet agencies, the NSA, the IRS, HHS, is being built and grown, and all of these gray-suited bureaucrats, people you'll never get to meet, you'll never know their names. When you need health care, you won't know who to call. If they're collecting your phone data, you won't know who that is. You won't know what their agenda is. But it might just be Lois Lerner, right? It might just be somebody with an agenda other than yours. This is why the founders believed in the rule of law, not the rule of man. The simple basis of freedom is that we treat everybody just like everybody else. There's no favorites. We're not going to subsidize you. We're not going to persecute you. We're not going to tax you too much. We're not going to regulate you too much. We're not going to tell you how to live your lives. Is that radical? 
the left is so afraid of that. If, if we actually gave people freedom, they might actually take care of themselves. They might actually solve problems from the bottom up. The alternative to that, we know that. Big government is scary. Think about all the isms. Communism, fascism, the Nazis, the radical Islamists. All of these tyrants that have abused power and in the process killed a lot of innocents. That's what we're fighting, make no mistake about it. I recently wrote a book. It's called Don't Hurt People and Don't Take Their Stuff. And I specifically wanted to explain who we are, what the rules for liberty are, and why it is that what we believe in, when we talk about the rule of law, we talk about the Constitution, we talk about the opportunity that freedom provides for people, why is it different from them? You guys all know that Saul Alinsky, the author of Rules for Radicals, who did he dedicate his book to? He actually dedicated his book to Satan. Was he joking? Was he goofing us? Or was he demonstrating the very nature of the progressive rules? Manipulative, trying to get people to do something they don't want to do, arbitrary, ends justify the means, right? The principles get dropped in later, and the whole point of the exercise is to find the right person to tell us what to do. Give them a lot of power, give them a lot of money, and everything's going to turn out awesome, right? How's that working out? The rules for liberty, on the other hand, are fundamentally different. We believe in treating everybody just like everybody else. We believe in freedom. We believe in opportunity that starts at the bottom rung of the economic ladder. We don't punish success. But we believe that everybody should get a chance to do something for themselves and their families and their communities. Is that, is that crazy talk? Are you guys with me on that one? Now, I am, I am not a moral philosopher, but I have stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. So I, I very humbly took the entire canon of Judeo-Christian teachings, all of the Scottish Enlightenment philosophers, a lot of Frederick Hayek and the Austrian economists, a little bit of Ayn Rand, a little bit of karma, and even a hat tip to the Big Lebowski. And I took all of that <laughs> and I mashed it into six simple rules for liberty. Rule number one. Don't hurt people. Are you guys with me on this one? There's, there's been a couple rules and uh, a couple uh, liberal trolls on Amazon that have re reviewed my book without reading it. And they literally take offense to the idea that you shouldn't hurt people and shouldn't take their stuff. <laughs> How is that possible? On what planet? By the way, I didn't make this one up. You may recognize this as the basic of a civil society. We all, we all agree, you know, libertarians love to use these fancy words. They talk about the non-aggression principle. It's a fancy way of saying don't hurt people, respect other people's lives. And if someone aggresses on you, you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to defend your family. And you have a right to defend your country, right? <laughs> Rule number two, and I'm going to push the limits of where I can get you guys to go on this, don't take people's stuff. <laughs> now, we all, we all agree that you shouldn't steal from your neighbor. You probably shouldn't steal from your neighbor's bank. And it's not even cool to steal your neighbor's identity online. But why is it, when it comes to politics, 
it's okay to outsource stealing to some representative in Washington, D.C. Is that any better? Should we take from one person we don't know, send that money to Washington, D.C., and have them give that to somebody else we don't know? By the way, that other person is probably not somebody in need. It might be the CEO of General Electric. That's not cool, right? But somehow, our progressive friends just don't get this. They think that somehow if you give all your money and all your power and everybody else's stuff to Washington, things are going to turn out better. That's just wrong, isn't it? Okay, let's see how far you can stick with me. Rule number three, take responsibility. When I was a kid, I discovered the ideas of liberty reading an old uh, copy of Ayn Rand's novelette called Anthem. And today, when I debate my good friends like Chris Matthews, he loves to say, yeah, I read Ayn Rand when I was a kid, and then I grew up. And even the president makes a straw man out of individualism, out of the idea that you should be responsible for what you do and how you treat others, arguing that you can either have freedom, you can either have respect for an individual, or you can have community. Well, I've done careful empirical analysis, and it turns out that communities are actually made up of individuals. <laughs> have you guys noticed this? We take responsibility because we know that if you don't step up, you see a problem in your community, if you're not willing to fix that problem, if you're not willing to do something that no one else is willing to do, it might not get done. Communities are based on people coming together in voluntary association to solve problems. I think it's utterly arrogant to think that somebody in D.C. thinks that they can do that better than we can. They're just wrong. Rule number four, more radicalism, work for it. Yeah. By the way, there's a couple liberal, liberal bloggers in the audience recording all this. They're freaking out at this point. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher gave a speech about six months ago to the Teen Choice Awards and Hollywood went bananas because he said that opportunity looks a lot like hard work. Can you imagine a world where that's controversial? And we all know the burden of hard work. We all know what it's like to worry about whether or not you're going to meet your payroll, whether or not you're going to get something done. Maybe everybody else is making fun of you because you have come up with an idea that nobody else came up with. They think you're going to fail, and you're lying awake at night wondering if you're going to get it done. That's the burden of work. That's the burden of liberty. But the upside is so awesome because you get to define for yourselves who you are, what you're going to be, whether or not you can provide for your families, whether or not you get to do something that no one else has ever done before. Work is awesome. We should celebrate work. Rule number, rule number five, mind your own business. And I'm talking to you guys up there. The NSA is monitoring this conversation. They know who you guys are. Whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? But today, we collect all of our phone data, data those faceless bureaucrats at the NSA, and we're told by guys like Lindsey Graham, if you've done nothing wrong, you have nothing to worry about. Really? Nothing at all. They would never, ever, ever abuse power. Have you guys noticed that sometimes
It feels sometimes a little bit like a one-night stand. It seemed like a good idea. And you know, they, they write you, they send you letters in the mail, they send you emails. If you're a Republican, it's always about the grand gesture, right? That big thousand-point media buy trashing your opponent. Democrats are different. If you're a Democrat, you might get a cool text message from George Clooney. But you know what they want, right? All the sweet talk, all the promises, all of the, I'm going to start voting right just to convince you that I'm someone else than I really am. You know what they want. They want your vote. And you know it, and you resist it, and you say, I'm not going to do that this time. Sort of like Charlie Brown and Lucy in the football, I'm not going to fall for it. But you do it. And you feel so dirty the next morning, don't you? And that's what politics is. It's this manipulation. It's this attempt to get you to do something that's, that's fundamentally different than your principles. That's why we're here today. We want to change the rules of the game. I figure that they work for us. We don't work for them, right? I first discovered the Republican Party in 1986. I was already an intern at, at what is now FreedomWorks, and I got a chance to go hear Ronald Reagan give a speech at the White House. And I, and I was young and naive, and I had spent all of my youth reading these really complicated books about Austrian economics, and I hadn't really paid much attention to politics. But there was Ronald Reagan talking about liberty, talking about freedom. He actually quoted Ludwig von Mises. Me being young and naive, I was thinking, Republicans, yeah, I want to stand with those guys. It was only later that I discovered that Ronald Reagan was never a typical Republican. In 1975, he famously said that the heart and soul of conservatism is libertarianism. Respect for the individual. The next year, 1976, do you remember what Ronald Reagan did? He primaried a sitting Republican. Can you imagine the audacity of doing that? What would John McCain have said <laughs> if he had been a senior Republican senator? Who's that wacko bird? <laughs> so Ronald Reagan did that. He challenged the GOP establishment. He reasserted the idea that a party should be about ideas and recreated the GOP from the bottom up. All of the experts said that he was destroying the party. All of the really smart people in Washington were leaking to the New York Times about, about how dangerous it was what he was doing. I argue today we have to beat the Republicans before we can beat the Democrats. <laughs> Rule number six, fight the power. Who's going to do this if we don't do it? Who's going to step up? Who's going to take responsibility? Who's going to do the hard work of saving our country if we don't step up and do it ourselves? This is the basis of the American model. It's not about finding another Ronald Reagan. It's about the shareholders, every person sitting here today, taking responsibility and firing our failed management in Washington, D.C. The establishment knows that we're coming this time. I feel like we're knocking on the front door and it, it feels like they're pouring hot oil down on us from the walls of their cloistered castle. They don't want our participation. They don't want to hear your voice. They don't think that this country belongs to you. They think it belongs to them. 
Are we going to take it back? They're going to be mean. They're going to run mean TV ads and call us names. They're going to leak to the New York Times. Always on background, by the way. They're not willing to use their own names. And they're going to say nasty things about us. I think we're going to win this fight. I am more optimistic today than I've ever been in my lifetime because when I was a kid, I got the ideas of freedom from the liner notes on a rock album. And then I stumbled across a book, and then I searched for another book, and then I stumbled across a professor at my college, and then I stumbled across FreedomWorks. It was a series of accidents. I didn't know what I was doing. I was searching for something. It was hard to find people just like us. Today, we can Google it. The reason that liberty is trending in this country is because we have the ability to connect with each other. We're not dependent on someone else telling us what to think. We're self-educating. We all have a stack of books on the side of our bed. We're organizing on Facebook. Becky Gerritsen has a bigger Facebook page than the state GOP in her, her state. That's power. That's our power if, if we practice it. I want you guys to stand up and show me that you're willing to fight the power. Thank you so much. Thank you.